Hello and welcome to my Suzuki GP100 engine project. Uh, in this part we're going to go over bottom ends and to be more specific how to distinguish a good bottom end from a bad one and other signs of wear and tear on the bottom end and also how you can tell how your engine is running by looking at the bottom end itself. So as we can see here we've got two engines in front of us. One has had a catastrophic bottom end failure and the other is basically a decent bottom end setup. So we shall get on to the decent one and then we shall move on to the knackered one. Um, the first thing to take note with the decent one is the coloration of the conrod. It's all one colour. We don't have any discoloration on the bottom end or bluing as some people would call it, which the other one has but we'll get on to in a second. Um, it's all even all the way up. There's no bluing on the top end either, which you can sometimes get. So this shows to me that this conrod has not got hot any time in its life in certain areas. So that's a good sign. Um, another, the major point when you're actually going, oops, I'll just knock that piston over. When you're actually looking in the way of the bottom end is basically how much movement is on laterally so basically up and down movement now if I grab put my finger through the small end and just give it a good pull and push we can see there's absolutely no movement there whatsoever so that's a good sign another one is to actually rotate the cra um, the conrod and basically you're just feeling for any grinding or like little bumps or anything through your finger which this one doesn't Side to side movement is alright, so that's fine. The reason why this is in there is to allow for expansion because when everything's hot, these parts will expand into each other and basically you want room for them to expand and that's why you have some side to side um, clearances within the crank. This is a decent bottom end and this is going to be the one I'm going to be using on my engine project. Now we should go on to the opposite end of the scale here with this one. Now. We can see from this one what strikes us first is the coloration of the conrod. Now, as we can see, the bottom end here has got this blue tinge to it. Now, this is called bluing, and when metals get hot, they'll, you'll see, you can see it on exhaust pipes, or mainly headers, they'll turn into like a bluish colour. Well, that's when the metal has got hot enough for it to change its characteristics, a.k.a. the colour. Now, this happens when there's either not enough lubrication, your mixtures are too lean, or your lube system's thin. It can also happen if you've got an air leak. But basically, this can also happen before the bearing goes. So basically, if you strip your bottom end and you see your conrod's blue like this, but your bearing is still intact, you have to change one of the things that I've just said or look into it because one of those things is causing your bottom end to overheat. But normally you'll find your top end actually overheats first and seizes before the bottom end goes. Which, to be honest, is a cheaper option for the top end to go than the bottom end. Because the bottom end means a full crank split, full balance, new bearings and everything. Now, another thing, we'll go over the checks again that we did for the, the other conrod. Which is put our finger in the small end and give it a good up and down movement. As we can see, there is a lot of play in that. Now, this this is basically because there is no bearing in here left. It's basically exploded. It's disintegrated while it's been going. Now, this has led to metal fragments actually being expelled into the case and also into the top end, which I shall show you in a second. But basically, this engine's been running, and if it's running, it's going to be going at a few thousand RPM either one part of the bearing is gone or the whole bearing is gone all at once and basically because that's thrown everything out of whack it's basically just chucked metal fragments all over and torn the bearing apart now like I say when that happens you'll normally find it's an engine a total engine failure the engine will not run with this you might get it to fire once or twice but it's just not going to start with this but like I say if we go back to the fragments what can happen and actually my dad pointed this out when I was explaining about um, my cylinder here is we can see there's actually a groove going all the way down now I, th I thought personally this was um, a ring that had caught the port and actually took a chunk out the port and dragged it up and down but after closer inspection the port's actually pretty alright now what's happened is when I said to my dad about the bearing gone he says what's happened is a part of the fragment out of the bearing is shot up when it's gone into the cylinder and basically it's got caught in between 
the skirt of the piston and the actual bore and has scraped this lining. Now, when this happens, because it's around about half a mil deep, it would have to be rebored. Now, I'm going to be using that one over there because that one's in pretty good nick. This one is apart from this actual nick in it here. But the thing is, what this actual groove is doing is acting like a very small transfer port. So it's allowing fuel air mixture, even though it's a little amount, it's still allowing fuel air mixture to get into the combustion area before it should be allowed to get in. So when the transfer when the transfer ports are actually all open, because as we can see, it actually sits a good, well, let's see, a centimetre higher than the actual first um, transfer port opens. So that's one of the reasons why you get this reboard. Um, other than that, other things that can happen, fragments can get into your, um, with this system anyway, can get into your disc valve and basically grind that up, which isn't, that's, there's always a slight gap where the actual um, fragments can go down because when it runs, this little, like, um, slope here actually does collect the fragments we can actually see some in there and this goes down and then feeds down in the disc valve and that wears the disc valve down but to be honest by the time it's got to that point this engine should not be running for that to happen but like I say it's it's I thought I would do that because it's not every day we get two identical engines together with totally opposite um, con rods or bottom ends I should say, so we've got one good one, one bad one and I thought it was a good opportunity just to show you how to distinguish when your bottom end's overheating and how to distinguish when your bottom end is actually going um, I just basically at this moment in time just to give you a quick run through what I'm doing here I'm taking all the decent parts off this one and putting them into this one so I've basically changed the shifter over because this shifter was bent so I've put the shifter shaft in there um, I'm going to be taking the bearings out of this one and the seals and putting it in there because the bearings have gone in this one and what else I think that's about it uh, everything else is pretty much already in this engine so and hopefully I should be able to crack them open soon because I'm going to take them up home because I've got the opportunity to go back up mine for a few days when my girlfriend's got an interview so and um, my dad says he'll try and crack both of these open and we'll try and swap the bearings and seals over when, we when we're up there so when I come down I'll be in a position just to put the ignition system on and hopefully in the very near future we should hear this engine running as in the one to the right, the one to the left is just as a donor now that's just a pure donor engine <laughs> but anyway I hope that video has enlightened you a bit to bottom end problems and bottom end um, telltale signs so I shall leave it there, um, as always keep safe and keep looking out for other videos, uh, thanks for watching.